Meanwhile, Israel, of course, is working on local solutions for a vaccine, but it also signed an agreement with a U.S. company, Octorus Therapeutics, for a supply of its COVID-19 vaccine candidate called LunaCov-19, which has just started human trials in Singapore. So what is so special about this vaccine candidate that spurred Israel's interest? Well, for more on that, we're joined from San Diego by Joseph Payne, president and CEO of Octorus Therapeutics. Joseph, thanks for joining us. First, I just have to ask you, what do you make of today's announcement by Russia? Hey, well, Kalev, first of all, it's good to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity to speak about Arcturus's vaccine. Uh, with respect to the recent news from, Arc uh, from, from Russia, I think that's uh, a, a very interesting development. Whenever a country or a regulatory agency a, a, you know, approves a, a vaccine with, with such a little amount of data, it's definitely going to capture the world's attention. Uh, it, it just showcases how Russia's, uh, you know, has a significant view on how fast we need to get this vaccine and in, into in people. Um, it'll be interesting to see how other countries follow suit or if they respect or honor that approval. Um, it'll it'll be interesting to track it alongside with you. Yes, it will. There is some skepticism about that, but let's put it that aside. And let's talk about uh, the vaccine candidate that your company is working on. What is, it has some very interesting special characteristics that I, I, seems to have attracted Israel's attention. Could you briefly describe some of them? Sure, sure. There are about 200, uh, 200 vaccines being tracked by the WHO, and about 10% of these have advanced into the clinic. These are considered the first movers, and we are one of them. But the Arcturus vaccine is different. Uh, and uh, so to address your question, our vaccine is a self-replicating messenger RNA vaccine, which means that the vaccine, once it enters the cells in the body, continues to express an antigen for two to three weeks instead of just two to three days. So it may negate the re requirement for a second administration. The vaccine is also beautifully simple. It is devoid of viruses. There are no viruses involved in this vaccine. There are, our vaccine is delivered with a non-viral vector. You'll see other vaccines utilize viral vectors. So because it's simple and devoid of viruses and viral vectors and adjuvants, it's uh, easier to understand and evaluate the safety profile of the vaccine, which means less time to get this uh, uh, to be able to be distributed to the public. All right. Well, certainly a one shot solution, potentially quick and easy to develop. Sounds very attractive. I mentioned you're starting human trials in Singapore. What's the potential timeline of when this actually will become available uh, to the public, including here in Israel? Sure. Well, we've already completed our first cohort of, dos uh, of dosing in Singapore at the, the one microgram dose. So that's moving along very well. Uh, we, uh, the phase one slash two uh, clinical trial will proceed relatively quickly. The purpose of it is to lock in the dose for the larger registrational study. Once we have that dose locked in, then we'll, we'll proceed with a, a likely large registrational study that will involve uh, more than one country um, and and will be able to uh, get the data as soon as possible. Wait, could I just could I just interject would that include Israel? You said more than one country. Would Israel likely be part of that uh, study? Well, what we want to operate the clinical trial or conduct this larger registrational study in areas where there's substantial presence of COVID. So we, we are monitoring uh, many countries, and one of them is indeed uh, Israel itself. If there's a substantial amount of COVID, whether it's a second or third wave, uh, we, we will seriously consider uh, a portion of the registrational study being conducted in Israel. Right. So, but clearly, but when would a like, again, I'm not sure I got you said, when would it likely, after all these studies, what is a potential earliest time it could actually come into public use? Uh, well, I know it's the, a tough the short question. answer is as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. The long answer it depends on the regulatory agencies. You just saw what happened in Russia, right? It, 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 you know these regulatory agencies. If if there's a significant demand and political push, the, the regulatory approval could be just around the corner. But but in in a, a typical course, you need to at least have some initial data collected in that larger registrational study. So by the end of this year. Um, you know, right. th th there's some optimism there. 
uh, it may take us into next year, but it, it's it's difficult for our I understand. to provide messaging. I understand. We need, we need to give that decision to the regulator. Right, of course, of course. Well, let's hope it is as, going to be as quickly as possible. We wish you all the success, certainly on that. Joseph Payne of Octurus Therapies, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm.